What's up, everybody? So I got a little time to talk. Um, so I think the last thing I left off on was uh, me not graduating high school. Now, my childhood, well, I would say my grade school years were not the best. I had a lot on my mind that I noticed other kids that were raised with their their real moms and dads. They didn't have a lot of the concerns that I may have and things like that. And I'm grateful for the fact that, you know, in some ways it hurts me, but mo in most ways it helps is the fact that my dad didn't even, my dad never allowed victimhood to be permitted in the, in the house. You're not going to walk around the house accusing people of things uh, and you not done any, you haven't done any self-evaluation and figured out where did you go wrong. A lot of times I said that it helps me because I've seen a lot of adults around my age, older than me, younger than me. They love to make excuses. You know, this is one reason why I didn't, I believe that I don't go to funerals and I can't make a lot of these events. I don't have friends is because my character changed in a way that I started recognizing the small things in life. For example, if you've ever noticed when people cry and you start to pat their back and rub them and all that other stuff and hold them and stuff, it makes it worse. It makes it worse for a person to actually get through it when you're when you're going down that path of comfort of actually physically touching somebody and, and, and stuff like that. So I learned that you just don't touch them. Let them get through it. Let them get through it because that that small act of compassion it goes a long way depending on how you use it. So these are things that like my grandmother passed and I'm not the type of person to go with the just kind of go with the flow and it's not by choice, it's just how I'm, you know, you have some people who can't stand the smell of cigarettes. You know, they don't. It, it, it's not the fact that they don't like cigarette smokers, but they themselves don't like cigarettes. And it's an it's an it's an impulse of like, God damn, I got to get from around here. The smell is just it's just I, I hate it. And, you know, you start to feel nauseous. It's almost like if somebody was to smoke a cigarette in a vehicle with the windows rolled up, you would possibly throw up. And that's how I feel where it's an impulse in which when I'm in the workplace or certain things may come up and people react a certain way, I nine times out of 10 don't act the way everybody think I should. Um, if you would have asked me at the funeral, hey, would you like to speak on your grandma or, or, or you know, anything like that? First of all, I'm not going to be over there hugging my dad and it's all right, dad, it's all right. You know, shout out to my little brother, Jeremiah, but you you post on Facebook, man, with an emoji, a sad emoji, man. Like, I don't understand, bro. I I, I do understand, but um, I've seen a difference in people that do get a chance to be raised by their biological parents. Um, and so upon me not graduating, I had to really, really do some some inward thinking like I, I I didn't succeed in this area of my life and will I ever succeed in anything um I couldn't relate to anybody you know because of my grades I felt like if my grades were on point then I would have had a better uh a better feel for who my friends might have been but um I really just, uh, you know, I took it very serious because, like I said, at one point, man, I thought I was going to 
graduate with my younger brother. That's how bad I thought. Excuse me, guys. That's how bad I thought it was going to get one day. You know, like, damn, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm keep failing high school to the point where my, my younger brother graduated before me. So life after high school was very serious, man, because I didn't want to be I didn't want to bring that level of shame to my family. I already felt like I did enough. So I wanted to make sure that point in my life was at least decent. You know, uh, a lot of the things that I had interest in, uh, Survivor Man, uh, you know, I I love uh, uh, like Net Geo, Net Geographic documentaries, you know, different things like that. I enjoy watching stuff like that. And I could really take my mind to another place uh, while doing these things. And I just found that I find that to be very ironic how my lifestyle is today. Um, so it was kind of like an invisible uh, narrative that was like, CJ, we, we tried to help you. You know, you just didn't want to do the work. That's what kept being, you know, told to me was I just didn't want to do it. I don't want to know how to do it. And constantly being told that made me very upset and it made me just tap out. It made me throw in the towel in regards to I really do not give a fuck anymore about what any adult has to say about me. And I'm convicted enough on the inside in which I really don't care anymore because it's if people say, well, do you care? I'm going to tell them, no, I don't, because it's it's making it, it's causing emotional breakdowns that I then start to blame myself where you got some people that'll say, well, don't, don't, don't beat yourself up CJ. And then you got some people that say you need to take responsibility. So it was almost like nobody really had, nobody knew how to guide me in that direction where it came to keeping my emotions in check and stuff. My dad did a fairly good job, but I told you a lot of my dad's teachings they 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 can hurt and help me at the same time because you know it it it, it some of those things are like very close-minded ideas you know you know like I said for an example like I'm gonna always apply for jobs and look for employment because my father was like bro who else is gonna feed you what do you what what do you think you're gonna do for money so it's already instilled in me that no matter how much I don't want to do it it just makes sense for me to do it, you know? And, um, but at that point, like I said, uh, a lot of people were making me feel, uh, very, very, uh, insecure about my, you know, just about my life choices and stuff like that. And, uh, again, I told y'all when, when you're hearing from adults time in and time out that, you know, you can do it. You, you're not a bad kid. You just, and it's stuff like that was like, OK, well, I know that to be true. Again, I've seen kids in school that would just get up and walk out the class. And I'm thinking to myself, my dad would fucking kill me. My dad will kill me if I do anything these kids are doing in here because they have no guidance. You know, uh, so after high school, uh, I told you all my first job was uh my brother my older brother was uh, went to a tip agency and when he went to the tip agency i went with him and i knew nothing about uh, the job atmosphere or nothing like that right and uh when i started that job i didn't have any medical issues uh that i knew of i told you guys my first ever uh partaking in in, in, in in marijuana was with Terrell and uh, I told you Terrell's dad was a marijuana smoker so he told me man I got some weed for my dad let's smoke and it seemed like that was destined to happen because I told you guys I didn't have any friends like Terrell just because he lived right behind me within close proximity like you know my you know, you can see his lights on and off from my house. That's how close he lived. And if it wasn't for that, 
I would have had no friends. I would have had nobody to actually hang out with outside of school. So I, I, I looked at that as something that it was meant to happen because me and my younger brother, Devin, Devin did, I told you, Devin was more tied to Xavier because they were real brothers. They were, they were biological brothers by, by uh, my stepmother. So Devin was not used to playing with toys and he wasn't used to the way I did things. And it kind of irritated my older brother when Devin would actually play with toys with me and stuff like that. So when uh, when Devin went to Terrell's house for, I think, Terrell, I think it was Terrell's ninth or tenth birthday party. When he went down there and I went with him, uh, the rest was history. Devin never went back. It was crazy. You know, Devin would, I, you know, it, it, it was just weird. Like, it's basically like he introduced us to and then, you know, just you know did his own thing for the rest of his it was crazy so that was the first time i ever smoked and stuff like that i never experienced any migraines never experienced any pain or anything like that um that didn't happen until i got a little bit older and what happened was uh me my brother and two other guys were on our way to work we got the job at the uh it was a 99 cent store distribution center where the inside of the store was 32 degrees and then you had the freezer compartment, which was like minus 13 degrees or something like that. And I'm walking around, you know, kind of trying to get a feel for everything because I'm new. And I'm trying to get a feel for how everybody do things because I've never been around grown ass men like that. And um, I, I kind of just looked like a deer in headlights, didn't know anything. And uh, after that, you know, we, oh, that's 2K20, jeez, I thought it was 21, but, um, yeah, I, uh, what happened was I ended up, I ended up catching, a, I guess, a fever or a, a, a small dose of the flu, and how that happened was I was going in and out, in and out. We had smoked weed uh, out of cigarillos before. We had to be up at, like, 4 in the morning. It was ridiculous. Four o'clock in the morning had to be, you know, it was just one of them jobs. Like, yeah. And they, you know, I was just going along with what they were doing. They were smoking, so I was smoking. And um, I started noticing, like, yeah, man, my head is tight and all this other stuff. Like, what the, what is going on? You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it was just real. It, 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 it was. It was. It took a lot, man, to function in there. I, I was in a lot of pain, and I told my older brother, I said, "Bro, I'm gonna go to the truck, cause, man, I don't feel good." And he was like, "You know," and and, and I thought I had made him mad. I thought I made him mad, and, you know, as far as you know, like, nigga, you can't handle it. Like, what's up? But uh, that was one of the most special days to me in my life. Shout out to my brother because um, at that at that moment. My brother Xavier made a sacrifice that I didn't, I, I couldn't see coming from left field. My older brother came to the truck. I was sitting in the truck in misery. You know, I, I didn't know at the time what I had started developing was cluster headaches. Um, my dad, I, I, when I was a kid, I had a lot of nosebleeds. And so, you know, when, when my, my parents started getting you know, worried about this, they would say like, oh yeah, you know, your dad used to have nosebleeds and, you know, that's kind of common in our family, you know, from the high blood pressure and stuff like that. So having those problems early on was, you know, they already kind of knew what it was, you know, they did, but they didn't. And uh, I'm trying to get some of my clothes indoors because it keep raining and stop raining and stop raining and stop. So I just don't want to I need clothes for tomorrow. But anyway, um, I might need a jacket. So um, that was one of the most special days in my life because I saw my brother come. I heard the truck open was like, who the hell? It was my dad's Tahoe. My dad's always been someone who had multiple vehicles. And my dad had a Tahoe. And he, uh, I, hear the, I hear the door open. I'm like, who the hell walking in here? And it was my brother. And he was like, let's go. And, and I, I just, I was in shock because my brother is the type, he's a hard working man, dude, hard working, you know, 
he had a lot of responsibility in regards to legal issues and a lot of mistakes he made early on in life where he had to, you know, backtrack and start, you know, putting his money away to pay off his legal issues. And um, man, that, 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 that was a special moment for me because it showed me that, you know, this guy really is my brother. He really does love me and he, he's concerned about me. Cause I told y'all I was the only child with my mom and then I was the oldest when she did have kids. So to see that level of compassion from my older brother, I thought that he was going to be mad at me. Like, nigga, you got me driving all the way out here and you can't even hang like what the fuck. But nah, he, he absolutely just basically ditched. Like he, he, I think it was just me and him too. The, the other two day shit, they didn't come. But when he did that for me, I, I, I just felt a great deal of gratitude toward him. Like, man, like I, I'm glad he's my brother. So that was my first ever job. I don't think my brother ever went back for some reason. So I think my second job ever was uh, at Walmart distribution center. And same thing. Um, see, this is one of the things that I was talking about where my, with my stepmother. Now that I've, I have entered real life, I don't have a car. My dad had told me, he said, man, we presented you an opportunity that if you were to keep your grades in line and stuff like that, that I would give you one of the vehicles. And I knew at the time, like, bro, that's not going to work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'll, I'll just be honest, like, bro, I need to be given the vehicle good or bad grades. And then the responsibility is actually taking care of it and stuff like that. That's the route that he should have went. But when I didn't graduate, you know, and stuff like that. That's whenever, you know, it was all on me. So um, then became the difficulties trying to get to work because I, since I didn't drive or anything and my dad's like, maybe you could take the bus. Dude, we lived on a private road. OK, I would have to at, at the very at the very least, I would have to get a ride into town from where we live at. So it was just a total like just just like a way like i don't know man just it, there was really no effort to try to help me in that area you know just a bunch of empty suggestions and um you know everybody said take the bus man and it, there was no uber or lyft at that time that, that, that didn't even exist so at the time uh you know my dad was like well yeah i know how you and your mama is and stuff like that but you need to you know man up swallow your pride and, and ask if she could take you to work I think my dad took me to work one day. That was another job where you had to be there. Like my dad was like, I'm, I'll be leaving by like 430. And I'm just like, oh my fucking God. That was another thing that, you know, I got ridiculed a lot for growing up was taking naps. And they tried to compare me to my mother, Tanya, because I told you my mother, Tanya was a drug addict and she would sleep all day, stay up all night. And me as a growing boy, they didn't understand that that's what I was doing was growing because I I saw that, you know, with Jeremiah, Jeremiah's growing up. He's in there eating whole cartons of oatmeal pies and honey buns. Uh, and he crashes out and nobody said a word. Nobody said anything. So that to me, I mean, hell, I, I, I when I seen it, I got damn it so frustrated. I was like, uh, hello, you know, not going to say anything to this guy. You know, he's just, he, now he's a growing child. Okay, I got you, I got you. So, uh, that that idea completely, it fell on his face. My dad dropped me off one time. It, boy, it ain't nothing worse than waking up and it's still dark. And you getting dropped off at work and it's dark. Nigga, by seven, eight or nine o'clock, it's like, bro, I'm trying to go back to sleep. And sure enough, that job didn't work out because, um, these are when my health problems started kicking in physically um, with the migraines and not knowing how to deal with them. Didn't take no medicine at the time. Um, my body was always aching. Um, I felt like I was a 50 year old man in a, in a 20 something year old dude's body. Um, when it came time to and, and this this started to become a pattern as well. Every job that I ever had, it got to the point where. When it came time to eat lunch, I never had money. Never. 
starting a job when you have no money and it's time to go on lunch break and you work at 12, eight to 12 hour shifts and you don't have any cash to eat or what, <laughs> bro, it, it, it got, it, it, at one point I remember our, my parents, I guess they were saving or whatever the fuck they were doing. And that summer had to be, it was one of the hotter summers. And I remember, cause I remember, you know, those tour days, football. And uh, I remember my parents used to really get off on buying off brand shit that tastes like the real thing. So they had bought these like weird Doritos. You know, they would just be like, well, it tastes the same, it's, it's cheaper. They was on that shit for a while. Um, but you know what? I'll let y'all eat on that video for a while, it's 20 minutes. I gotta download some videos, upload some videos. So <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to support the channel, man. Like it, leave a comment. You know, you know how this shit go with the algorithm. Like you actually have to comment. I don't care if it's good or bad just to kind of get my channel up and up and running uh the most i've ever had on a comment was uh one of my friend's nephew you know tried to you know uh he oh man why are you talking about my uncle on here man telling my uncle business shut the fuck up so that was and i actually saw the the views on the video start to go up up, up. i'm like oh, okay so you actually have to have engagement so y'all have a good day man good lunch good night Kiss your kids, rub your woman feet. I'm out.